you want to be very careful about doing large-scale experimentation with large-scale systems. Because the probability that if you implement a scheme in a large-scale social system, that that scheme will have the result you intended is negligible. What will happen will be something that you don't intend, and even worse, something that works at counter-purposes to your original intent. And that, that makes sense, because if you have a very, very complex system and you perturb it, the probability that you can predict the consequence of the perturbation is extraordinarily low, obviously. If a system works, though, you think you understand it because it works. And so you think it's simpler than it actually is. And so then you think that your model of it is correct. And then you think that your manipulation of the model, which produces the outcome you model, will be the outcome that's actually produced in the world. And that doesn't work at all. I thought about that an awful lot, thinking about how to remediate social systems, because obviously they need careful attention and adjustment. And it struck me that the proper strategy for implementing social change is to stay within your domain of competence. And that requires humility, which is a, a virtue that is never promoted in modern culture, I would say. It's, it's a virtue that you can hardly even talk about. But humility means you're probably not as smart as you think you are, and you should be careful. And so then the question might be, well, okay, you should be careful, but perhaps you still want to do good, or you want to make some positive changes. How can you be careful and do good? And then I would say, well, you try not to step outside of the boundaries of your competence and you start small and you start with things that you actually could adjust, that you actually do understand, that you actually could fix. One of the things that I've been promoting, I suppose, online is the idea that you should restrict your attempts to fix things to what's at hand. So there's probably things about you that you could fix, right? Things that you know that aren't right, not anyone else's opinion, your own opinion that aren't right. You can fix them. Maybe there's some things that you could adjust in your family. Well, that gets hard. You have to have your act together a lot before you can start to adjust your family because things can kick back on you really hard. And you think, well, it's hard to put yourself together. It's really hard to put your family together. Why the hell do you think you can put the world together, right? Because obviously the world is more complicated than you and your family. And so if, you, if you're stymied in your attempts even to set your own house in order, which of course you are, then you would think that what that would do would be to make you very, very leery about announcing your broad scale plans for social revolution. Well, it's a peculiar thing because that isn't how it works because people are much more likely to announce their plans for broad scale social revolution than they are to try to set themselves straight or to set their family straight. And I think the reason for that is that as soon as they try to set themselves straight or their families, the system immediately kicks back at them instantly. Whereas if they announce their plans for large-scale social revolution, the lag between the announcement and the kickback is so long that they don't recognize that there's any error there. You know, you can get away with being wrong if, if nothing falls on you for a while. And it's also an incitement to hubris because you can announce your, your plans for large-scale social revolution and stand back and you don't get hit by lightning and you think, well, I might be right, even though you're not. You're seriously not right. I might be right. And then you think, well, how wonderful is that? Especially if you could do it without any real effort. And I really do think fundamentally, I believe that that's what universities teach students now. That's what they teach them to do. I, re I really believe that. And I think it's absolutely appalling. And I think it's horribly dangerous because it's not that easy to fix things, especially if you're not committed to it. And I think you know if you're committed because what you try to do is you try to straighten out your own life first. And that's enough. Like there's a, I think it's a statement in the New Testament that it's, I think it's in the New Testament that it's more difficult to rule yourself than to rule the city. And that's not a metaphor. All of you who've made announcements to yourself about changing your diet and going to the gym every January know perfectly well how difficult it is to regulate your own impulses and to bring yourself under the control of some well-structured and ethical, attentive structure of values. It's extraordinarily difficult. And so people don't do it. And they, instead, they wander off. And I think they create towers of Babel. And the story indicates, well, those things collapse under their own weight and everyone goes their own direction. Hey, shalom fam, shalom, shalom, shalom. Let me uh, go ahead and play this real quick. Give me a second. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up, this is a uh, going to be a pre-recorded. Um, I'm recording it today. It's uh, 5.17 a.m. my time. Uh, on November 28th, but it's just um, something came up earlier when I was trying to do the class with my son here at the house, so I had to stop. So I'm just going to do the recording and upload it. Um, all right, fam, so Lord willing, uh, we can get an edifying class here today. So let me get to the point. All right, here we go. Copyright disclaimer. This content does not belong to Bible Chronicles or claim this intellectual property. 
The content provided today has and always will belong to the content owner. Viper Chronicles does not have any affiliation with the owner of this property. As mentioned, Viper Chronicles does not intend to make use of any material for the purpose of harvesting gain. However, Title 17 of the United States Copyright Law states material in use can only be done when it's for theological or general educational purposes. And does Viper Chronicles believe that this principal material falls under fair use, which honors protection under Section 107 of the same U.S. Copyright Law? Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, the class is basically regarding repentance, fam, okay? True repentance, sincere repentance. And uh, we're going to find out. <clears throat> that video I showed you guys, it's a very intricate video. Now, uh, keep in mind, there was a lot said. Commitment. How getting your house in order. Okay? And um, basically fixing your inner self instead of trying to fix the exterior aspect first. Right? Uh, because it's more complicated. Mm -hmm. Whereas you yourself can. And that's where repentance comes in. It's a collective repentance for all of us. But it starts with each one of us, like individually. Let's go to Luke chapter 15, verse 11, all right? Let's start off with this. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 says, And he said, A certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of the good that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey you know, into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country because obviously he was broke. And he sent, and he sent him into his field to feed swine. So he gave him a job. And he would fain have, and he would, and and he would fain have filled his belly with husk that swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So he would have been willing to eat that food that were given to the pigs, but they weren't giving it to him because it was for the pigs. Verse seventeen. And when he came to himself, so he pondered and said, "What in the world am I doing?" He said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy servants. It's called humility, fam. Okay? It's called repentance. But you got to bethink yourself. It says you're here when he came to himself, right? He had a ponder, like, what in the world? What's going on? And a lot of us have come to that conclusion now that we're here in this walk. Uh, this judge, uh, you know, uh, they say truth, but I want to say walk. I'm tired of saying truth. Because what they taught us wasn't truth. And it's been a journey. And this journey is literally leading us into repentance. That's the whole point, fam. Look, let's look. Let's learn from from our from others that have made mistakes. Proverbs chapter five, verse twelve. Okay, let's go there real quick. Proverbs chapter five, verse twelve. It reads, "And say, how have I hated instructions, in my heart despise reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to them that instruct me, instructed me." I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Almost in all evil, but he was in evil. So he's here saying here, how did I hate instructions? How did I hate reproof? How did I hate correction? How, would, how do I not obey, obey the voice of my teachers, the elders, the people that have walked through this before and inclined my ear to listen to instructions? How, 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 did, I, how did I not do that? Because that happened, fam. That happens. So here we see Solomon starting to re reconsider like his mistakes. Because he even said it himself. How have I hated instructions in my heart, meaning my mind despise reproof, correction. Second Timothy chapter four, verse two. Watch this. 
It says, preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See, he understood that that's part of this repentance. He understood that that's part of the scriptures. You can't have it. You can't have one without the other. When the Most High gave us the commandments of God, obviously, I mean, so when the Most High gave us his commandments, then obviously, it was for our well-being. It was for correction, reproof, and instructions. Job 40 and 3. It reads, then, then Job answered the Lord and said, no, sorry, verse 6. I'm sorry, where am I going there for? Uh, hold on a second. Mm. Yeah, let's read it. Then, said, then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will not proceed further. Okay? Now, what is he saying by this? He's, getting, he's like, he's accepting his reproof here. All right? Promise to silence. Promise to shut up. Sit down and, and, and learn the ways again. Because Job was a little bit distraught here. You know, he lost his children. He lost a lot. Let's go to Ephesians 5.13 and then we'll come back to this real quick. Ephesians 5.13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. See, correction is because of the most high, fam. Ain't no other reason. Look, I'll show you real quick. Proverbs 25, 12. Watch what it says. Something simple, simple, but yet to the point. Proverbs 25, 12, it says, As an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. It keeps talking about correction. It keeps talking about reprove, correction, discipline. Jordan Peterson was talking about the difficulty to get your house in order and then to get your family in order. To think that you're going to change the world first. So that's why those classes I had done earlier, right? It was really regarding that. It was actually regarding just that. A lot of times we come into this uh, walk or this journey of ours, right? And, uh, you know, we're excited and we, we want to give everybody the word, but instead of in, in, instead of feeding us first, feeding our family first, understanding that we're like trees and it takes years to give good fruit. We're not patient. Repentance requires patience, family. Discipline requires patience. Being reproved requires patience because it's not easy. Let's go back to Job 40. Watch. This is what the Most High is asking for us. This is a challenge. This is a challenge, fam. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man, not like a boy. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Will thou also disannul my judgment? Will thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Has thou an arm like God? Or can or can it thou thunder with a voice like him? No, of course not. So then he says, Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. What do you think that is, fam? I think that has anything to do with just clothing and looks. Maybe the wet and west camps may take of it. I'm going to give him a precept. Go to Sirach 6.23, watch. This is what he's talking about. Discipline is glory, fam. That's what he means. Sirach 6.23 reads, Give ear, my son, receive my advice, and refuse not my counsel, and put thy feet into her fetters, and thy neck into her chain. The fetters is basically shackles, and her is wisdom. 
So put thy feet into her feathers and thy neck into her chain, meaning put yourself in that discipline, that sincere discipline that hardly anybody wants to go through, that most people hate. Because undisciplined is much, is much easier. I think people always want to say, I'm going to lose weight, but they don't. It requires discipline. Oh, I want to change certain habits, but they can't because it requires discipline. And a lot of times, discipline is fatiguing. It's very tiring, quite frankly, because it requires 24-7 monitoring of your mind. Bow down thy shoulders and bear her and be not grieved with her bonds. That, the analysis of your thoughts, 24-7, come unto her with thy whole heart, 24-7, and keep her ways with all thy power. Seek, I'm sorry, search and seek. And she, meaning wisdom and discipline and understanding, shall be known unto thee. And when thou hast got a hold of her, let her not go. Here's the point. For, here's the two verses of the point. For at, thou, at, for at the last thou shalt find her rest, and thou shalt turn to thy joy. And thou shalt be turned to thy joy. Then shall her fetters, meaning discipline, reproof, constructions, be a strong defense for thee, and her chains a robe of glory. And that's what they're, that's what the scripture is talking about in Job 40. I'll just read Job 40 and 10. It says, Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency and array thyself with glory and beauty. Why? Because the most High was telling Job, look, man, get yourself disciplined again. Get yourself in that correction again. Get yourself in that humility status that you don't know. Shh. And just shut up and be quiet. And see, a lot of us don't want to do that. A lot of us don't want to accept that. We don't want to be told that we don't know anything. Yet the Most High is very simple in regards to what He requires. But you know, we want to know, like we know, we want to act like we know. Matter of fact, some of you, I want to act like you know more than some of us that are a little bit ahead of you. Deuteronomy ten twelve. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? It's very simple, fam. But to fear the Lord thy God and to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Joyfully. Joyfully. This is another thing he wants from us. First Kings 8, 46. Repent, repent, repent. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. All right, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, which because they did, so that they carry them away captives into the land of the enemy, far or near. Right, that happened to us. Yet if they shall be think themselves in the land whither they be carried away captive, let me read it again. Yet if they shall be think themselves, meaning repent, meaning saying, oh man, what am I? How did I stop listening to God? How did I not? How, how would I hate instructions and, and reproof? And so, yet if they shall bethink themselves, the land where the day were carried away captive, and repent, 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 and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart. Now, why am I stressing that? Because it's a we concept. Fam, when you're praying, don't just pray for yourself. Pray for the whole nation. And with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive. And pray, on, pray thee towards their land, meaning Jerusalem. So wherever you're at, try to pray towards Jerusalem, which thou gave it unto their fathers. And again. And so they return unto thee with all their heart. So it requires repentance, and this is a process, fam. Second Peter three nine. Watch what it reads. Second Peter three nine. Second Peter three nine. It says, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness." Y'all thinking that He ain't looking at our work? He is, but He's long suffering to us, word or towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We all have a grace period. Some of us need to hurry up and get there. Some of us have a little longer. That's why some of our brethren haven't heard the, the, this whole entire, uh, I'm going to use the word truth right now, 
because they're far or near. Or, I mean, they're far. Or they're in areas where you just can't get to the word. Maybe no electricity. Matthew 3, 2 says this, And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Family, the kingdoms of heaven is at hand. Seriously, and I mean it, because we're at the last hour. Verse 11, Indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance. This is what John was saying. He was baptizing people with water. You know what I mean? Letting people know, hey, the Messiah is coming. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. So this particular individual who's coming after John is much more powerful than John. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Not with water, fam. But this individual, this particular person that's coming after John is much more powerful, much more capable of destroying you or giving you mercy. Mm. Remember, the Messiah is the word. His father sent him. Watch this. Whose fan is as his hand. And he will thoroughly purge his floors and gather his wheat into the garner. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. I don't know if you guys want to be that one. That's what God requires of you. Ecclesiastes 12, 13. I'm not going to. I'm just. It, let's, let's hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man. Repent. Be converted. The whole duty of man is keep his commandments. Daily. Daily. Watch. Let me go to Luke first real quick. Luke 13, 3. It says, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So what is it asking? Man, so, hey, repentance is no joke, fam. You got to be thinking yourselves and wonder, like, what am I doing? Y'all know exactly all the sins that you're committing. You can lie to me all you want. You can't lie to the Most High. Proverbs 24, 30. What's one way to do this? Let's start off with this. I went by the field of the slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. And lo, it was all grown over thorns. It was all grown over with thorns and nettles that covered the face thereof. And the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instructions. Let me read it again. I went by the field of a slothful and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. So now, fam, think about this for a moment. Step outside of yourself and look at yourself. I went by the field of the slothful. You're the slothful. You're looking at yourself. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Y'all are void of understanding. You know why? Because I know that you guys aren't playing all the laws. I can tell. It says, And lo, it was all grown over with thorns, meaning sins, and nettles. Thorns could be also resentment, anger, bitterness, and nettles, past you know issues that you still linger on, had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. I mean, you're destroyed. You're still carrying some other issues from the past. Those sins that you don't want to face, that's, you're, you're this building. Then I saw and considered it well and looked upon it and received instruction. So you have to reflect on you, fam. You got to look at yourself and say, like, man, what the hell am I doing, man? That's why Psalms 4.4 says this, right? Easy instructions. It says, stand in awe. Sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. See that, fam? Reprove, correction, shut up, be quiet. You don't know anything. That's humility. Be a child. Just like a child. That's how you're going to find repentance. Be still and analyze yourself. Shut up for a moment. Stop acting like you know everything. Second Corinthians 13 and 5. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. And the only way you do that is if you freaking sit still for a moment. Examine yourself. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Meaning, look at your all your sins. I'm going to tell you something, fam. You want to look at all your sins. You don't want to leave any of them in there. Because that will come back to haunt you. And we're seeing it now. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves. 
how that Jesus Christ is in you except ye be reprobates. You don't want to be that reprobate, fam. This examination, this repentance, this being still, this whole process of analyzing yourself, stepping outside for a moment and looking at all of the crap that you have, that is part of the growth. That's why Paul says, I die daily. 1 Corinthians 13 or 15, 30, 1 Corinthians 15, 30 or 31. I die daily, meaning he examined himself every day. He repented every day. He let go of the old man every day. Every single day, it's work. That's why the video earlier says those, it's hard to get your house in order, let alone your family, let alone the outskirts. But that's why I brought up the scripture regarding the glory and the majesty. Those shackles, these laws are joy and glory once you overcome and once you discipline yourself. It's like this, fam. If I were you, I'd get a planner and I'd base my life off that planner. You know how difficult that is for somebody that's never had a planner? That means you got to plan the day before, schedule your day, and then you got to follow it to the T. That is fatigue. I ain't going to this I ain't going to lie to y'all. That is very tiring if you're not used to it. Because I'm going to tell you this right now. You got to you got to man, you got to dig deep. You got to dig deep. Romans 13:14, watch what it says, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof meaning you got to turn every single rock over dig into every crevices and your every crap that you have you got to give it to the most high you got to give it to the most high because if not you're going to be tormented with those sins i'm not you don't think i'm you think i'm joking watch this real quick you know, this whole thing that happened with us, right, about the whole, you know, from 2019 up to this day, right, they call it the, the punches, the sharp ones. Well, we understand now that it was the other nations. Watch this real quick. This is scary, fam. If you don't repent from all your sins, this will happen to you. You're going to face them, and you don't want to face them. Because they're spirits. All those sins are spirits. And you're going to see their face. Finally. Ezekiel 35.5 Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. In the time of their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live it, say the Lord, I will prepare thee unto blood. And blood shall pursue thee. Sit thou, sith, sit thou has not hated blood. For since thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Isn't that what's been attacking them through the blood? Right? How that thing is building up and all of a sudden is just like killing them? Just, I mean, seriously, we see the videos. Watch this. This is it's prophetic, fam. You want to be these guys? Because their sins are coming after them now. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 1, and I'm going to skip. Will be unto thee, Babylon, and Asia. Will be unto thee, Egypt, and Syria. Let me read it again. Will be unto thee, Babylon, and Asia. Good up yourselves with cloth of sack and hair. Be, bewail your children and be sorry for destruction is at hand. Whoa. A sword is sent upon you. Who may turn it back? Watch this real quick. Verse 17, woe is me, woe is me. Who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of, of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine, the great death, the beginning of wars, the be the, and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine, plague, tribulation, and wish. are sent as scourges for amendment, meaning correction. I'm going to show you all this, fam. This is happening to them. You don't want this to happen to you. I have to turn it off or turn it down or pause it in some areas because I don't want them to get me in trouble, okay? So let's go real quick. Watch. This was the one that was... Uh, watch this real quick. Just stay with me. A 
If y'all don't face your sins, you're going to face them like they're facing them now. And you're going to see the spirits. An elderly woman has done what's believed to be. I have to turn it down. It's by the astral vaccine. Investigation is underway tonight over whether a local man suffered blood. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me turn it down real quick. All right. As a result of getting the Pfizer. Look at that, fam. Boom. Watch. Boom. <laughs> Anguish. Anguish, torment. We don't know what's going on in their heads, but we know that in Exodus, the same thing happened. The Most High tormented them and put anguish in their minds. So every wicked thought that they had, they got to see the spirit behind that wicked thought. Watch this. What do you think is going on in his head? It looks like he's extremely scared, fam. We don't know what these people have done. We don't know what sins they've been carrying or what they've done. We don't know the iniquity. But if they never repented, if they're not our people, and especially if they're not our people, and they've never repented, most I said he's going to give them the cup that we drink. Fam, that's torment. Something's going on in their brain. Something's going on in their brain, right? Let's go. Two teachers. Look at this one. Look, look, look what he's afraid of. What is he afraid of? <laughs> A member of the scripture at the beginning of verse 16, it says, with who? With Asia, right? Watch, let's read it again. We'll be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. We'll be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Why? Because didn't that come from out of there? Therapeutic good is following the receive yeah i don't want none of that man men women repent you don't want to see your sins like that high school student look at that fam They're afraid. They're, they see something and they're afraid out of their minds. It's like that whole scared sh list. They're so scared. Like they're so scared that it kills them. Look at that torment, fam. Look at that torment. A 20 year old nursing student. are getting. 16 year old. Cheerleader who. Over the day. Thoughts after receiving. There tonight. Receiving his astrocytes. Whether a local man suffered blood. Due to a blockage. With medical experts. Look at that man. Look at that man. Look at that man. Who is he fighting? Was he punching? Fam, y'all don't want to see your sins in the last minute. I have this feeling that they're seeing their sins, that they were seeing all the iniquity that they committed, all the spirits that are around us, that they saw them, they, they saw that they literally opened that, that side of that world and said, oh my God, and it scared them shitless. Y'all don't want none of that. I don't want none of that, fam. 
Repent. 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 I'm telling you right now. James 1 and 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Count it joy, fam. That's the most high trying to talk to you. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work. That ye may be perfect and entire without wanting nothing. So in this repentant stage, you got to stick around. You cannot quit. You cannot let go. You cannot give up. Because that means you're tired. You're not disciplined. People that give up on this awakening is because they're not disciplined. They're not working towards salvation daily. They're not repenting daily. They're not thinking of the scriptures daily. Bam. I'm, 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 I'm literally like begging y'all. You don't want to face the most high like they're facing them right now. Mark 2.22, and no man putteth new wine in old bottles, lest the new wine doth burst the bottle and the wine spilled. And the bottle will be marred, but new wine must be put in new bottles. I already done a class on this, fam. Y'all know this. You cannot be an old creature with this new understanding. You cannot. You got to let go of your old ways. You got to let go of it completely. You cannot trim your ways. You cannot trim your ways at all. You got to honor. You got to embrace this discipline. You got to love this walk. Watch this. Proverbs 4 8. Watch what it reads. Proverbs 4 8. It says, uh, Exalt her and she'll promote thee. She'll bring thee, uh, thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my saying, the years of thy life shall be many if you repent daily. This is a daily walk, fam. One day at a time, straight up. One day at a time. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the that, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. See? Make you perfect. Meaning work towards completion. In every good work, do his will. Psalms 40, verse 8. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. I'm just giving you a precept, fam. On Hebrews 13, 25, the will is Psalms 40 and 8. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Make you perfect, fam. Make you perfect, fam. I'm almost done. Second Ezra chapter two verse seven. Watch this real quick. Second Ezra chapter. No, I'm sorry. Second Ezra chapter seven, verse forty. Sorry, sorry. I was looking at something else. Forty six. I answered then and said, "This is my first and last saying that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam, or else when it was given to him, uh, to have restrained him from sinning. But what profit is it for men now?" In this present time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment. And O oh, thou Adam, what hast thou done? For thou it was for though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. So obviously that's a question that we ask. It's like, you know, what's the point of all this? Verse fifty seven, he answered me he then he answered me. Then answered he me and said, This is the condition of the battle, which men that are born upon the earth shall fight. Fam, all it's really asking for is us to overcome. Look, that if he overcome, he shall suffer as though has said. But if he get the victory, I'm sorry, that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as though has said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. That's the whole bottom line, fam. That's the whole bottom line. This is a challenge, basically. I mean, I, for lack of better words, it's like a, it's like a dream, man. 
And we have to wake up out of it. And it's going to be just that quick. So remember, discipline, repentance, correction, embrace it, and do it daily. Examination, daily. Daily. Watch Proverbs 16.32 says, he, is, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. That's what, uh, what's his name was looking for. It's in the Old Testament. All right. I, uh, I have a video for y'all. Um, let me play it real quick. Uh, give me a second. And I have a, a song. Hold on. I had it in my library here. I'm going to show you something. This is just to show you that discipline is required and not anybody could do it. It's very challenging. Hey. But it's well worth it, fam. All right. Anyways, I got a song after this. Uh, Lord willing, y'all had a great day. Hopefully, it was at a fine. And uh, once this plays, I mean, once this is done, I'll play the music and then I'll call it a day. All right. Shalom, fam. You hear something a lot about change, and that is that people don't change because they're too lazy. Well, I want to go to bat for the lazy people for a second, because I think that what looks like laziness is often exhaustion. Let me tell you about a fascinating study in psychology. So picture the scene. Some students come into a lab, and it smells amazing. Somebody's just baked fresh chocolate chip cookies. And in front of them is a table, and on the table are two bowls. And one of the bowls has the fresh baked chocolate chip cookies. The other bowl has a bunch of radishes. Now, some of the students are asked to eat a couple of the cookies, but to leave the radishes alone. Another group of students is asked to eat several of the radishes, but to leave the cookies alone. Now, while these radish eaters are sitting there nibbling on this rabbit food, the researchers go out of the lab. They're trying to induce temptation. They're trying to see, will these radish eaters sneak a cookie? It's kind of sadistic when you think about it. But the radish eaters are strong. They resist the cookies. Not a single one of them sneaks one. And meanwhile, uh, as you can imagine, the, the cookie eaters don't experience the same kind of temptation to binge on the radishes. So study appears to be over. And then both groups are asked to go on to a second step that, that doesn't appear to be related. It looks like a kind of logic puzzle where they're asked to trace out a complicated geometric shape without raising their pencil above the paper. Unbeknownst to them, this task was designed to be impossible, can't be done. The researchers simply wanted to see how long they would persist in a difficult task. Well, so the cookie eaters, they try and they try and they try and they go on for an average of 19 minutes trying to solve this impossible puzzle. The radish eaters, they last on average eight minutes. Why this huge gap? Well, the answer may surprise you. The radish eaters ran out of self-control. After they were reining themselves in, resisting those cookies, they didn't have enough energy left to rein themselves in to keep doing a frustrating task. And this is something that psychologists have proven again and again, self-control in the broad sense of the term, meaning anytime we're really monitoring our own behavior carefully, is exhaustible. That helps to explain some common things we all experience, like when we're at work and it's been a really hard day and we come home and we're more likely to snap at our partners or to eat more than we should. Now, here's why all of this matters for change situations. Because in almost every change situation, what we're doing is we're substituting new, unfamiliar behaviors for behaviors that are older and more comfortable. And that burns self-control. So think of your morning routine, for instance. You have a way, a system for showering and brushing your teeth, and you've been doing it for so long, it's, it's unconscious, it's effortless. What if you wanted to redesign the whole thing from top to bottom? You could do it, 
but it would take tremendous self-control. You would have to monitor yourself every second of the morning. And by the time you got to work, you'd be mentally exhausted. What looks like laziness is often exhaustion. Change simply wears people out. Even well-intentioned people will simply run out of self-control after a while. To learn more about this very interesting research in psychology,